Hello everybody and welcome to My Mechanics Insights. In this video I'm going to show you all you need to know about bluing. If you're following my main channel you know that I'm using two different methods of bluing. Hot bluing and cold bluing. Bluing only works with steel. You cannot use it on aluminium, brass or stainless steel. I've been asked a lot why it's called bluing when it turns the steel black instead of blue. Well, it has a bluish blackish kind of color. You can see that very well if you hold the part against the light. Let's take a look at how these techniques work, the pros and contras. Let's start with hot bluing. Hot bluing is a very cheap, fast and easy method. All you need is some kind of blowtorch or oven to heat the part up and oil for the quench. Any kind of oil will work. I'm using cheap cooking oil. Old used oil does work as well and you can always reuse it. Put the oil in a heat resistant container. For the best results degrease the parts before heating. Otherwise you could see some fingerprints or other uneven spots. Heat the part up to around 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. And quench it in oil. Due to the high temperature, the oil will immediately burn into the surface and turn the steel black. Bluing does also protect the part from rust. Different surface finishes before the bluing will also have an effect of how the bluing will look. I really like the look of sandblasted parts after bluing. It makes a very even matte, shiny looking surface. I also tested for the first time how a polished part will look after bluing. As you can see it's not worth to polish it, because it looks pretty much exactly the same as it was just sanded. If you heat the part up too much then the bluing won't stick properly and starts to peel off. You need to remove the failed bluing with sanding or sandblasting and redo it. If the temperature is too low, the oil won't burn into the surface and it doesn't turn black. You then can just try again right away. Now let's take a look at the cold bluing. I'm always using Super Blue by Birchwood Casey. It is very important to always put the bluing liquid in a separate container and start using it from there. Do never dip the part directly into the original bottle, nor dip the brush into it. Bluing liquid will turn bad with time once it was in touch with steel. You always need to degrease the parts, otherwise the bluing liquid won't work. I'm always wearing gloves for that matter. After degreasing, you can apply the bluing liquid with a brush on the part. Once the whole part is black you can wash away the remaining bluing liquid from the part with cold water. And carefully dry the part with a towel or compressed air. After that you need to cover all the blued surfaces with oil for 12 hours to make the bluing stick. I also tested the cold bluing on a sandblasted and polished part. After the 12 hours the bluing process is finished and you can clean the parts and that's it. Let's compare the hot and cold blued parts and the different surface finishes. On the left side you can see the hot bluing and the cold bluing on the right. These parts were sanded, sandblasted and polished. The cold blued parts are a tiny bit darker than the hot bluing, otherwise the results look pretty much the same.
How to decide which method is the correct one to use? I'm always preferring hot bluing over cold bluing if it's possible. Just because it's a lot faster and easier. The one and only negative point of the hot bluing is the heat before the quench. That's why I'm choosing cold bluing if the heat is difficult to achieve or can damage the part. That's the case on very large parts. It takes very long and a lot of energy to heat big parts equally up to the needed temperature. I'm also choosing cold bluing on sheet metal, as the heat and quench could warp it. Cold bluing is also needed for heat treated parts such as hardened parts or springs. Heating such parts up again would ruin the heat treatment and change the abilities of the material. A hardened part would not be hard anymore after hot bluing. Cold bluing is also very useful if you only want to apply it on a certain spot on the part. And that was it for this video. I hope I mentioned everything. If you still have some questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and for the support. I really do appreciate it.